Thanksgiving we're collecting now. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's kind of up to day of or certainly for the pack on Friday. OK, the Friday packs the okay. 16th. As so we were talking about getting some turkeys, so we that's all make sure you guys. Yeah, we need about a right now. I think Charlene told me we need about 180 left. OK. Um, but we need 450, so we, we've yeah. got a decent amount that are wow. coming in. Well, I can I can definitely help get the word out that you need. Thank you. There's 180 left. I can ask to have that put in our church bulletin. Wonderful. Christ the Lord's name. If you tell them there's a need and where to where to put it, they'll they'll they tend to show up. So Love it. it's amazing how people people are to serve the our neighbors that are hurting. Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, I was already paying in care and said, all right, I need the toy list. Where is it? Where is it? So I got because that's that was such a we were able to do that and help out last year from the church with our angel tree program and because everybody was wanting oh, i want to buy i want to go buy, i want to go toy shopping i want to you know yeah. and so many of the families now post COVID, are like you know gift cards are better and i'm like i get that but when you've got a group of women that are like i want to go to target and spend <laughs> there. like they just they just want to go shopping you right. know they, their kids are older they don't they don't Hello. get that experience anymore they hey, like Maria. Yeah. hey Randy. Yeah. Hey, sweetie. So yeah, so we were like, I put that out to them, and I said, so here's the age group. Here. I literally made that announcement at ten o'clock, and I was waiting. We were waiting through the to the eleven o'clock service, and one of the moms came in with two great big bags, and I'm like, okay, where's you been? That's awesome. That's so cool. I think I need to pick a different seat. Well, you had a big right in the middle. Yeah, you are. You're on the hot seat. Oh, we could say you have to trade with Tracy since he's going to be the speaker. He'll be the center of attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go sit at that table. <laughs> okay. Did I see that you've already signed up? The church has already signed up for some now. Yeah. yeah, I was like, wait, like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? As soon as, because I didn't want my age group to be, get gone. So I, we kind of, I, I started out kind of on the low end. We had, with our cha we're changing pastors. Did you so bring we probably, the strike? Crowds are, I think I, it's, you know, very low. So started with a sure. low number. Exactly. I can always add on. Yeah, that's true. But I don't want to, like, overcommit. Yeah, we tried a different process this year. I love sign up genius. So it's great. That way, somebody just can do one and two. They have yes, so three of us that forgot yeah. stuff. Because we've done that before for our, uh, our events. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's they, a nice system. Well, I like the they, they, they. So love I'm it. sure the Karen mm -hmm. and the girls are having fun with that. So yeah, yeah. Try not to dabble in that much. It just pops every once in a while. I get you. At least get a hold of you. Yes, thing. and I've I've already I sent a note to Olin because I missed the cutoff, and he said there was he could still add on, so I just have to send him the final number. So he's going to do that today, and I got way late, so I'll send it tonight or in the morning. I am not ordering fifty-two pounds. That's a little excessive. Did you so she wants 20 on the number. She wants 20, she but we don't need another. Unless she tried that by two pins, not what? amongst us. Uh, so which, which one is she going to get? I, she wanted the peach, the peach shaped ones. I think I'm just going to get us one of those for everybody because okay. the one, the other ones look just like last year's, except the picture in the middle is Boston instead of Atlanta. So I'm like, nobody oh, knows that's the difference. So the peach ones at least are different. You got a one minute warning there. Yeah. <laughs> Half of money I give you. Thank you. Gloria 35. I was sure it's in my purse because I see her envelope, but check is you. <laughs> do, you, do, you do you usually carry around empty envelopes or you just. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No. And my husband asked me, and I said, "Don't worry, it's in my purse." All right. So this is these are your dudes, these not mine. not glorious. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome Good evening. to the uh, second meeting of October here at the Lawrenceville Lions Club. My name is Brian Donigan, uh, uh, president. Uh, 
It's uh, great to have each and every one of you with us. Um, <clears throat> we have a good meeting tonight. Um, before we get started, uh, Tom, would you lead us in the pledge? And uh, Catherine, would you lead us in the invocation? Please rise, everyone. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the day you've given us. We thank you for all the many blessings you bestow upon us individually and as a club. We thank you especially for Tracy being here tonight. Thank you for those that could make the journey and be with those that could not for whatever reason. We particularly lift up Kathy and her family at this time. We pray for those that are sick and we ask that you be with all of us as we make plans for the upcoming months and lead us in the direction you would have us go for our activities and the charities we serve. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> do I have, uh, each of you should have a agenda in front of you. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda or alter it in any way? Second. All right. I'd like to make an adjustment. Okay. Um, to old business, can we please add uh, a quick discussion on our uh, lease with the city? Of course. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> um, so, um, adding that in, um, is there a motion you approve? Second. Okay. okay. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the agenda is approved. Uh, line bill. Uh, Twister, what you got this week? All right, as we know, Halloween is just right around the corner. So, question two part again. Are you a fan of scary movies? And if yes, what is your favorite movie? Sorry, Mrs. Gibbs. No, 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 a thousand times no. Thank you very much. <laughs> I guess that means you don't have any. Favorite. No, I, I, no, I do not. Don't like them. Don't watch them. Maria? The same way. Be short. Yes. <laughs> you don't watch them. How do you know you don't like them? No. Pete? Uh, no, I'm not a fan of scary movies. No, no one in this room is going as Freddy Krueger for Halloween. No. no. <laughs> Brian? No. Jeez. I guess you are only one. You, know? oh. you know, I I'm not a fan of the Freddy Krueger style horror movies. I'm going to send you a Dracula but, but, movie. But but you, I think you have to include Jaws, Duel, and some of the other movies out there, and those I'm a fan of. Was so. Jaws scary? <laughs> how how were you when you first saw Jaws? When that thing comes out of the water and goes out of space. I don't know how I'm you think it may be a horror movie. Horror movie thing. That's what I know. I know. So I said Jaws, I'm not a, a fan of the critic crew, but I think that Jaws and some of these others. Hmm. If, you, if you're not horror, what would we call them? Uh, intense and awful. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just my only pleasure. Don't, don't feel free to use that. And misery. <laughs> oh, God. No, no, and, no, 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 no. And what's the one? Uh, the uh, Silence of the Lambs? Oh, well, uh, no, that's, that's Catherine's favorite. Okay, no. <laughs> that's her favorite? No. <laughs> yeah, if I ever do so, that, if I ever do that, that noise, I get slapped. <laughs> how, how many ever saw the movie Creature of the Black Lagoon? Oh, uh, Oh, I guess I don't like scary movies. <laughs> if you've ever seen that, I guess oh, I've seen something, but not oh, totally. The, the but I, I'm telling you one movie 
which I was a teenager and I pass out. Scary movies. And that's what I was asking. It was How do we Hiroshima Mon Amour. Scary and horror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hiroshima, my love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first Mars what came out the before that movie. You don't need what did you say, Brian? I said Mars Attacks is one of them. Oh, that's, so, but that's not a horror movie. Well, that's not a horror movie. <clears throat> All right. That Josh was scary because I was a surfer in California. Or that, that was <laughs> <one. laughs> all scary, right? We were, it was very real. I was, uh, <laughs> well, apparently you're a good surfer because you're still here and didn't, well, Josh was full. Yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> we, we took a trip to Myrtle Beach one time and uh, it was over Memorial Day weekend. And, the, the we were in the con we were in like a three-story unit and there's another three-story unit next to us and um these guys had um Yay. hey glory Hello, had a, a, an awesome stereo system that would broadcast over the beach oh, we could no. all hear it and we were listening to music all weekend long <laughs> and uh you have on it Sometimes we're, we're taking a break from the sun we're inside somebody yeah. comes inside and says hey, come out there's a big shark in the surf oh, so we go out and sure enough, it looks like about a 15, 16 foot shark in the surf. And there's these two guys. One guy's got a fish and he's throwing it out there attached to a fishing pole. Oh my God. And the guy's standing there. <laughs> and we're sitting there watching these idiots, right? And all of a sudden there's. Oh, oh no. That's funny. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Right? Oh my God. They get quite a response. Mm -hmm. How much? I don't like them. I don't like horror movies or anything else, but some of the scary ones, if you could lump in Silence of the Lambs or Jaws or something, I might watch them. Okay. Gloria? Yes. The question tonight is, are you a fan of scary slash horror movies? Oh, no pun intended. Uh, and if so, what's your favorite? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to hear your answer to this. <laughs> Mr. Gibbs. Uh, no, none at all. Thank you. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> he asked everybody, but he don't. <laughs> yep. Mr. President, I turn the floor back over to you. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for our our uh, tail twister line bell game. So. Uh, next up, uh, line Tom, Secretary's report. Do we have? Any obligatory motions tonight? Hearing none, I'll start reading. Oh, I'll make, no. <laughs> make a motion that we accept the report. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, any discussion? Uh, I really appreciate you, Tom. I don't, please don't think that you <laughs> don't. Nobody reads yeah. it. Uh, I'll, I don't read I'll, the newsletter. I didn't read that one, but I you know. normally do. All, all, in, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, and we move on. And by the way, for anybody that cares, these are photos. Of course, the best photos will be on Facebook if or if Brian puts them up there. Uh, they are in the they are in the our website. Yes. Awesome. All right, uh, Lion Tom, would you uh, please introduce our guest to us? I would be thrilled to. Let's see. We have with us, of course, I think everybody here, it sounds like maybe not Gloria, but knows Tracy. Uh, and he is the executive director for Streetwise. Uh, Tracy started out after school as a professional musician and traveled the world. Wow. Then at <laughs> age 20, you didn't know that, did you? I did not know that. Then at age 26, he became a residential contractor, developer, and designer, building dreams for others. Uh, from his talents of being a contractor, he became a Keller William realtor. He started volunteering several years ago when he was working at uh, Keller Williams and was not only a top realtor, but coordinated Keller Williams Red Day every year at Streetwise. From that, he was a beautifying renewing the, the landscape there. Um, he became a volunteer and was uh, approached to join the board by Terry Powell, right? That's correct. Yeah. And uh, he is still a volunteer, even though he is executive <laughs> director. And ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Tracy Joseph. Okay. 
I do know many of you and, and thank you for inviting me tonight. Streetwise is a pretty cool place. Um, it's, it's one of those that has been quiet in the community for a long time, unless you were one of our clients. They seem to be able to find us faster than than donors and volunteers, but we're working on that. Uh, but Streetwise Georgia is uh, right down the street uh, on Cedars Road. And our mission statement is to paraphrase that we uh, have a goal of providing the necessary tools, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual tools to an individual uh, whereby we can help them stabilize their life, change their environment, and move from a place of dependency to a place of, of stability and self-sufficiency. We do that in kind of a multi-tier approach as we want to meet their emergency and basic needs in the way of food, clothing, hygiene supplies, cleaning supplies. Then from there, we kind of expand and, and look into what else they, they have going on in their lives. So each client that comes to us is vetted and go through a process that takes 30, 45 minutes in an interview process with a trained volunteer. And part of what we want to find out is what's gone on. What's what's brought you to this place? It could be generational poverty. It could be uh, medical bills. It could be a senior that is absorbed the kids or the grandkids. Um, could be bad decisions. And on all of those things, we hope that we either have resources that we can refer them within the building to help them, what we call life skill classes, or wraparound partners. We have about 36 wraparound partners that uh, just really are the gambit. Everything from medical help, mental health, <clears throat> counseling, homelessness, uh, other addiction programs that we can refer people to job placement, interviewing practice, the, the idea is that we're trying to help them stabilize themselves to where they can truly be standalone and we can graduate them from streetwise. On the other side of that coin, uh, there's always those that will not be able to get to a place of stability uh, necessarily, whether it's it's medical bills or physical limitations. Poor decisions, generational poverty is a very difficult mm -hmm. one to to crawl out of. Um, and so we know biblically and, and believe as a Christian ministry that we are called to feed the poor and uh, take care of widows and orphans and, and those that need our help. So our real goal at Streetwise, in a word, is we're a little different than most mm -hmm. facilities. Uh, we're not like the co-ops that have a geographical boundary. We can pretty much go anywhere we want and accept uh, clients from anywhere. So we have clients that come from as far away as Woodstock, Macon, Hartwell, Monroe, um, all through Gwinnett Hall and, and other counties. Um, we are represented in 19 counties uh, in, in how far reaching some of it will go. We do it a little differently than most of the agencies in the sense that we have a uh, reservation policy. A client has to have a reservation in order to be served. And we do that in multi-prong ways as we do what we call our dailies. And we'll serve our clients Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. We're open Wednesday and Friday, but those are warehouse days and, and, and kind of rejuvenating our supplies. On Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, we'll serve 33 to 40 families, and they will receive approximately 250 pounds of food and supplies, uh, which right at the moment we price that out, and that's equivalent to just a couple pennies under $700. Um, pretty amazing amount. Now, I kind of come back to that in a minute. Once they have been served there, we invite them to, we just renamed it, uh, was Farmer's Market, now it's called Heaven's Grocery Store. Um, and that is a dignity shopping piece. And in that area, they get to choose. Our families come in and they choose what's right for their family, what's right for their needs. And, and that, that ranges from pet supplies, school supplies, baby supplies, vitamins, uh, cleaning supplies, toiletries, feminine supplies, the gambit of things that are so expensive 
and for many of the families that are on various programs like SNAP and food stamps and, and things, those are not cut. And so those are expensive items and that allows us once again to provide a physical tool that may give them some room. And so your question that we often get asked is, well, why give so much? And a client can uh, come for services every six weeks and the the reason that we have chosen to do that and not not alter either diminish the amount we give or see them more frequently is if we see them more frequently we can't see as many people we want to be able to see more families the big reason that we give that much is we really are attempting to give them some bandwidth some room in their budget where this may release that grocery cost which we know has accelerated the press says 18%, we can tell you it's 42%. Um, the press is not factoring in a few of the, the supplies. Um, believe it or not, when they the federal government does that number, they don't include meat, they don't include dairy, um, and they don't include some grains. Um, so it's a little bit of a manipulation. So I get distracted on that a little bit. Uh, <laughs> But basically, the idea is if we can bring that bandwidth, then maybe we can help them stay current on their rent or their mortgage. And then they're not facing an eviction, which in this market is devastating. Yeah. They won't find another place. Um, maybe it'll help them stay current on their utilities, some other bills. Maybe they've got medical bills, and this will allow them to catch up with some of that. So the goal is to just help them get their feet underneath them so that we can help them. So that's prong one. Prong two that you're familiar with is we have a mobile food pantry, which is on the second Saturday of every month, except for November and December, where we combine it with the holidays. Mobile food pantry simply means that our clients don't get out of their cars, but once again, they have to have an appointment. We serve on non-holidays. We, we uh, have a goal of serving 250 people, and we do that in two and a half hours. <clears throat> It is quite a process. Uh, it's we have pre-packed. It's 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 something. We have pre-packed the the boxes of meat. They'll get meat, uh, produce. Usually about forty pounds of beautiful fresh produce. Water. It can be other supplies like cereals, grains. Uh, if it's special events like Thanksgiving, we're going to give them a turkey in addition, a separate box for that meal. Uh, if it's Chris, Christmas or Easter, they're going to get all of that. Plus, then we want to do a lot for the kids and the families. So we do Easter baskets for the children. Uh, we do Christmas presents for the, the kids, uh, 436 of them last year. And we also um, are aiming at our teens and trying to do things for our teens. And at those events, we are able to uh, provide them with $75 gift cards because the teens are kind of a lost group. Um, come back to the teens because we had an event Saturday we'd like to brag about, so I'll, I'll come back to that. But And then the other prong that we, we um, work on <coughs> is through the school district. Uh, Gwinnett County Schools and us have been working on a number of projects, and we are aiming at those what they call Title I schools. A Title I school is one where 100% of the student body is at or below poverty level. And if you magnify that to a cluster, and a cluster is at minimum, well, it's a high school, sure. but then minimum one middle school, often two, minimum two elementaries, often four. So imagine that 100% of that cluster is at or below poverty level. That's 10,000 families. Mm -hmm. It's massive. So the program that we've been developing with them is we will isolate a school in one of those Title Ones. We will pre-pack boxes at our facility, load our big truck, and we take and have a, a, a mobile food pantry on their premises, usually for a parent-teacher night. Oh. And it's been pre-advertised, and they have uh, vouchers that comes from the social workers and the counselors that are aware of just how at risk those are, and we're trying to aim at those that are either at risk of becoming homeless or are homeless. There's 1,900 per this year, 1,900 children in Gwinnett County Schools that are homeless. Mm -hmm. 1,900. 
So that's another prong of whereby we're again just trying to find places to bring bandwidth into the families. And I mentioned earlier that we want to try to heal body, soul, and spirit. And so we're aiming in a lot of different ways. We have what we're what we call life skill classes that we either serve at Streetwise or through partners uh, that we believe are better suited, better set up for us. That could include financial literacy. That's a five week class and, and they learn about credit, bad credit, savings, investing, <clears throat> pardon me. And then even for those that need it is credit repair as a part of that. We are hoping within the next 60 days to be able to start brief care and that will be divided up. We found mm -hmm. that COVID wiped out a lot of dreams. Uh, whether it was a certain dream of income or a job and for the teens it may have been a sport or it might have been a graduation and be able to walk across the stage there's a tremendous amount of mental health angst and so we're hoping that we can facilitate some of that um, cooking classes we give a lot of food and for a lot of these folks they don't know the poverty mindset if it truly is generational has some very deep wiring that none of us would be able to figure out. We can't make it fit and they can't make what we see and believe fit. And it is possible to rewire, um, but it's it's a process and it takes a lot. But a lot of the poverty mindset does not even conceptualize that you have options. Mm -hmm. They don't understand it. They've, they've been bred and raised in a, in a place where these are your only options. And so we're trying to figure out ways to help with that. And the cooking class is part of it is when we give them a box of meat for the dailies, it's about 40 pounds and it's going to have steak and salmon and brats and chicken and hamburger and whatever our donations have brought into the building. And for a lot of those people, they've never seen it. They don't have the ability uh, or knowledge to know how to cook it. So we're wanting to teach them how to cook it culturally relevant. If you have someone that's come from Mexico, but they lived in the center of the mountain district, they don't know how to cook salmon. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. want to teach them how to do so and then how to store and how to share and those that'll be coming soon. That kitchen. You, you guys were still working on that last time I was. Yep, up there, yep. so. Almost done. Got a little electrical work and, and it's it's ready. We've got our teachers and our chefs mm -hmm. that are going to help us with that. Mm -hmm. I totally uh, no, I'm not teaching, but I do want I am going to sign up to help like awesome. us out because that's awesome. right. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. And if that one we, we kind of test things and if it goes well, we'll expand it. Um, it's in a small room that was a lab. Uh, our, our building was a, a lab before us. If it goes well, uh, we'll expand it into another area where we'd be able to put in a very large uh, commercial stove and hood and be able to teach eight or ten people at a time. Um, so we're we're going a lot of prongs. Um, the one I wanted to brag on was uh, teens are on our heart. Uh, I started a committee a year ago called the Teen Advisory Group, and it's made up of teachers, professors, after school program people, people that mentor at um, Juvenile Hall. Uh, we have some directors of Gwinnett County School, and I asked the question at the first meeting, what is an at risk teen? I was surprised because they told me it was a team. Yeah. I was going to say every one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we get in our mind a Hollywood picture, much like we get in our mind a Hollywood picture of what a homeless person looks like. And I am guilty. I thought, well, it's the poor kid, the one that's doing poorly in school, the one that's hanging with the wrong kids. <laughs> well, the truth is that can happen in a weekend. In COVID, it probably happened a lot more than we understand or realize because they were alone. They were they were isolated, many of them. And so our goal is that we're starting with the teens that we know we serve at Streetwise, which is approximately 209 families, 400 uh, teens. And we put out a survey in July and the parents and the teens had to answer that survey. And one of the questions we asked the teen is, what is your number one most immediate need? And the highest number of answers came back as clothing. We found out that many of them have one outfit for school. So you can imagine, besides just the cleanliness point of view, 
the humiliation point of view because they didn't get to take long for their friends to figure out they oh, got yeah. one out. Mm -hmm. And so we figured we can do that. We have a clothing room. Um, we partnered with 12 Stone Church Revolution Teen Center. And so this Saturday we had a mm -hmm. dedicated program uh, for our 400 teens that they could come and shop for clothing no cost. Mm -hmm. And so we were really yeah. something. We had no idea what would happen, uh, <laughs> how many would show up. We just had no way to figure. But we ended up having 80 oh, wow. teens that took 1,053 articles of clothing. Oh, wow. Wow. And then we also had feminine products because the other thing that we know is that um, a number of, of girls will miss three to four weeks of school because they don't have the products that they need. Mm -hmm. And so these are areas that we we aimed for and, mm -hmm. and heading towards. And that's that's kind of streetwise. We run on um, we will process this year about 2.3, 2.4 million pounds of food and supplies. And we do that with five staff, three are part time and the rest are volunteers. So uh, you may have heard us talking a little before on our mobile food pantry. We range from 60 to 75 on a what we call a normal month and as high as 180 at Christmas time uh, for the events that we do. And then during the week we we have we need a minimum of 28 on the days we serve clients and on the other days we can live on 20. Um, we literally could double the number of people we serve if we could add 15 regular volunteers for each of our three service days. Mm -hmm. We could grow from 33 families a day to 66 sure. families a day. So I know I just rattled a whole uh, bunch of stuff out. You only need 15 people to do that? We could we could then double it, yeah. Not like on those mobile food pantry days, you know, when you provide them food. You know, again, you know, those families are missing out on some stuff that you know you ask them if they're celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something, mm -hmm. and you have cakes and whatever oh, to give it's them my that, favorite part which an extra little treat. Like, yeah. Yeah, this, this puts a smile on their face. It does when suddenly they realize they're going to be able to give their kid or their their brother or whoever you know a way to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. That's that's really that was probably the first thing that really surprised me mm -hmm. the first first time we came and, and helped out. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. there's cake. Mm -hmm. This is awesome, you know. Like let's find a let's find families that need this. You know, it's like the, the basics are there, which is great, mm -hmm. and you know they need that. But that just it's kind of like they don't even some of them don't even realize that it's there, and then they get all excited and you kind of feed off that energy. They sure do. Yes, sir. Are you familiar with Lions Clubs and what we do? I am somewhat. Um, I know that we uh, have Lions Clubs that volunteer for some different things. We also uh, are involved through Anthem mm -hmm. uh, with the with the Lions Clubs. Um, I'm not intimately knowledgeable about what the function and, and your direction. All right, so I'm looking at how we can help you. You're a nonprofit. You have the capability of checking someone's financials, right? The see what, and we do what, every every client is vetted. OK. Lions Clubs is a 104 year old organization. Uh, they've been along around longer than I have. <laughs> Bye -bye a week. Um, we started out <clears throat> out of a group of Chicago in Chicago men's group, and they came together about seven or eight years after they were founded, um, they had a speaker come to their convention in in uh, Ohio. And you may have heard of this lady and everybody here has probably heard of her. Who am I talking about? Helen Keller. Helen Keller. Mm -hmm. Helen Keller. She spoke to Lions Clubs International at their convention. And one of the things she addressed is and asked them what to do is to become Knights of the Blind. And that's the focus that Lions have taken on for well over 90 years, 95 years. What I'm getting at is you have people that have needs. You spoke about medical needs. Medical needs could be this. 
we can help you out there. If you have people come in looking for a job, but they don't have glasses, they cannot see the written word. If you would be so kind as to contact, I don't know if you have my information or you have Catherine's or Tom's, but if you would contact one of us, we have uh, an op op optometric uh, office, not an office, but you know. Mm -hmm. okay. We have relationships we can, with We can several send you to them, yes. the Wonderful. person to them, give an exam, give two pair of eyeglasses, and we would pay for that. Wow. All right? Now, depending on what their needs are, if they need bifocals or just standard lenses without bifocals, there's difference in prices. Also, if that person would need maybe to have cataracts and they <clears> need the cataracts <throat> taken off, we can put them in touch with our our Lions group down in Shanley, and they can provide surgery for that person. Wow. Uh, but all this has to be under the level of the poverty line, okay? Because they're going to check them too. I'm going to take your word for it because you're already checking them. If they're coming to you, you're checking them. That's correct. So I don't have to go any further with that. But if I send them down to the Georgia Lions Lighthouse, they're going to delve into it, right? Sure. So doctors and hospitals give their time. What we do is raise money for that. We send it to the Lighthouse. We send it to the camp. We send it and help people like yourself and uh, your organization. But what we can do on you know, a more frequent basis for your group is send us the people that have a need for the have vision impairments where we they can, can take care they of can get the one we work with the most is at Mala, Georgia. <coughs> is it I I med I I lab. I, I lab. I lab. I always call it I've lived there some reason. But I lab, we have a relationship with them and they will go ahead and do the exam and everything. And as soon as they know what they need, they contact us. Wow. And we we go ahead and pay for it. Fantastic. And then that way, they just then while their glasses are being made or whatever, it's all taken care of. Back. What, what I do is, in your case, I would send you the paperwork with your client's name on there, right? They take one or two of those sheets of paper. I don't have with me right now, but they would take over there to the eye lab, whatever it is, and they have to present that. One of those sheets of papers we already sent to them. They have to marry them together. Right. So when they say the person came, they need glasses that comes back to me or the treasurer, she will go pay the bill. OK, and then your client can get their their glasses. They don't walk out of there with a pair of glasses sure. until we pay for them. Sure. So it is up to the client <laughs> to call iLab and say, I need to set up an appointment through the Lawrenceville Lions Club. Now, the good thing is you you said how many counties that 19 all right we probably have a lions club in each and every one of those counties sure yeah we should well we got, you know, yeah. we're virtually we're virtually there's one or two or three lions clubs in in every county in this state wow so once i find out or one of us catherine or tom find out what counties you represent we can look and find out what Lions Clubs are in that and get that back to you. And then we can communicate and say, we're working with your organization. If somebody comes in through this organization and they need glasses, you know, they can help them. They don't all have to come in through Lawrenceville. Wonderful. Well, we primarily <clears throat> try to help the people here in Lawrenceville. Right. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I can't get your document. We've got uh, it all broken out by city and uh, county of the the places that we serve our our families. But what a great opportunity. And and you mentioned vetting. So this would be something that I shared with our client advisor. So any new uh, client that comes in and then we try to vet them every 18 months just by sheer volume, we can't do it yearly, but they go through a vetting process and it starts with the economics. Um, and are they at or below the federally defined poverty line? We also 
uh, have them come in with their bills and their rent and all of those. And we literally build a budget with them. We see if there's places that we can help them make wiser decisions uh, with some of their, their funding. Um, and then we also give some allowances if they've got heavy medical bills and things like that to try to make sure they stay qualified. But we vet them pretty, pretty hard. Um, and then we have other conversations to find out what other needs they have. What other resources do they need? Uh, what brought them to where they are? Uh, are there places that we can help refer you to to help? And then we always end in a spiritual conversation if they allow um, and ask them about if all the way from if they're saved to if they have a church family, if they have a small group, if they need a Bible, do they need a Spanish speaking Bible? Mm -hmm. And we have those type of things. And uh, it, it's it's pretty neat. We've actually had 42 salvations inside our walls just this year. We, we work with a lot of missionaries out of my church, Gwinnett Hall Baptist Church. We work with a lot of missionaries that can contact me and said, I'm going on a mission trip. I need some used eyeglasses, all right? We cannot give used eyeglasses out in this country. <clears throat> they don't like that, see? Because then the optometrists and the eyeglass people don't make any money, right? But we can take used eyeglasses. We pick them up at several different places Everywhere. around here. Take them down to the Georgia Lions Lighthouse. They clean them, categorize them, and then when the missionary calls me and said, I could use some glasses, how many? I don't know, 150, okay. Wow. Women's, children's, men's, bifocals, standard, whatever. And I will get them to put together, put them in a box <laughs> and send them to me, or I'll go pick them up and give them to that missionary. You would be surprised how many pictures come back because we... We ask them to get pictures of the people they're giving to. The smiles on mm. their face oh, yeah. tell a big story. And some yeah. of these people in some of the uh, South American countries and over in Africa, these people, they don't have optometrists on every corner. They don't have Walmarts over there. And if they did, they couldn't afford them. A lot of our missionaries just take and put them on a table like this, and the people come and try them on, try them on, try them on. What will work for them, they take. Mm -hmm. And my point is this. All these missionaries can go out and give uh, Bibles all day long. But if they can't see to read them, so not doing them any good. Yeah. And yeah. it goes with the people here. They get a job, they can't read. They're in, they're in deep trouble because it'll be a long time before they can pay, uh, pay for a new pair of glasses and you probably don't wear glasses, but I can tell you, they ain't cheap. Yeah. No, I, have, I have one uh, uh, brief question. Um, when you have your mobile pantries and stuff, um, do you have any any um, any jobs for somebody that can't lift over 20 to 30 pounds? We sure do. We can divide out all kinds of different opportunities. It's same during the week mm -hmm. for our volunteers. We've got things that if people have physical limitations, um, mm -hmm. we've got admin positions and things that we need done within the office to run the organization. Mm -hmm. And then um, if people are wanting to be client advisors, we'll train them to be advisors to where they're meeting with people and interviewing them and helping them. Um, there's any gambit of, of things that, that people can do. And same with if you've got a grandchild and you want to bring the grandchild, we, we allow up to seven or eight years old. They become your teammate yep. um, and, and you're a team while you're, you're volunteering and then teens and so forth. We allow, um, they can come by themselves at 15. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you so very much uh, for, for visiting with us and for everything that you do. We uh, we definitely appreciate uh, the great work that you do. Thank you. Uh, let's let's uh, give uh, a round of applause. Do you have a business card? I do. Yes. I have one question. Yeah. From what or how you procure uh, the clothing for our clothing? comes mostly from private donations. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if this is enough for everybody else to get them started. Mm -hmm. Mostly from private donations, and then we sort them um, very detailed. If we would not wear them, we do not distribute them. 
Um, we also have a couple of stores that seasonally as they're changing uh, will give us what's left, usually young ladies clothes and um, then clothing drives like through the churches and, and, and things like that. And we accept that five days a week. The uh, one suggestion, I don't know how much work uh, you can get in touch with uh, different department store, <laughs> uh, Walmart, TG Max, Marshall, which is the same company, uh, Ross. And I give you one suggestion. They have marked down. After uh, six or seven weeks, that item in store, we mark down one time, second time. Third time, yellow tag. Is not sold, we donate. Mm. So you can keep in touch with company. I don't think this. Uh, I'm going to ask. I'll say, ask your, ask your manager. Where yeah, you can I'm going to ask if going. it's uh, uh, up to her to donate or donate by company. Right. And yeah. I'm going to let you know. Because be it's, yeah. it's much better to give to somebody in need than sure. throw Absolutely. away. Absolutely. It practically broke my heart when I see so many stuff practically are throw in the trash. Sure. And then, so yeah. And we we do receive a lot <laughs> from Walmarts and Publix and Costco's and things. <laughs> But it's through the Atlanta Community Food Bank, sure. so they would not, the clothing would not fall under that that donation mm -hmm. umbrella. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to be able to know who to pursue yeah, on, the, on yeah, the next yeah. side of it. Yeah, yeah. I know. Great. I know what I mean. One one child go in school with only one set of clothing or that. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you are uh, definitely uh, uh, free to stick around with us, or you can, uh, you know, head uh, on to your family. Um, we 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 appreciate you. Sure, with us. sure. Well, if it's okay with you, I probably will. I've been seven days a week for the last three <laughs> weeks. <laughs> you are welcome to become lion with us. I will look into it. So tell when I can, I'll look into what the requirements are and. You already meet them. You're, you're yeah, upright yeah. and breathing. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure, Tom. Thank you. Nice to meet you all, Gloria. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Brian, thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Okay. See, I know I talked to you on the phone before. Ah. <laughs> thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I will definitely yes. be the next call. Please do. Please do. And if any of you want, thank I'm you. I'm sorry I told that you when I come in, but I was eager to take my place. And be fine. <laughs> thank you. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Always good to see you, Catherine. Always good to see thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And if any of you ever want a tour, please give me. Thank see you, sir. We'll it, see you soon. It'll blow your mind. Come in <laughs> and take a tour, and we'll show you what we do. And uh, during Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, when we're seeing the clients, which is between 10 and 2, is really when you would see it in action, where, where mm -hmm. you'd see what we're giving and, and love to show you what we do. Probably mm -hmm. call you. Uh -oh. Did you have me? Uh, you're fine. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Give me a call and we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll arrange it because I'd love to show you all what it what it looks like and oh. with the clients and, and the facility is pretty amazing. We have a 25,000 square foot facility. Oh, you're in this area? We're on Cedars Road, so okay. we're just right down the Stones road. Through. Okay. Right at the end of the at the end of the runway. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Gloria, for the Gloria is you very all. good on, on all that charity. Love it. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you for thank inviting you. me. We'll see Take you in care. a couple of weeks. Thank you. Sounds great. Right. Thank you. Take care. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Very nice person. Watch oh, that you. first step going out of here. I <laughs> sure will. Thank you. Um, I can so, answer your questions, Uh I, I did in our agent care. I know. So easy. Yeah. Service project every every second Saturday. Done. Yeah. Or it doesn't even have to be on the Saturday. Except for yeah. November. November, December. December. But <laughs> we listen, we did we did last November and we and 
Yeah, we work Christmas too. We yeah. did both of those. Uh -huh. And it's just phenomenal. It's like I said, Tom and Thea came. We did one that was that was tied to was it uh Kaiser? Was Kaiser or Humana that uh -huh. had the grant come in through LCIL? Uh -huh. Through one of those two. And so we went and that was, you know, like I said that was kind of our first introduction to to the Mobile Food Pantry, but Bill's Bill's become a regular over there. I can direct some traffic. He directs traffic very well. But it's like I said, it's yeah, but that but that's so, so I mean if he can double his output by us just getting 15 people there. But it's 50, but you understand that's 15, 15 people three. coming regularly showing up and volunteering. I mean, right. like I said, they're open three days a week, mobile food pantry aside. They need people that can consistently <laughs> show up and serve that, serve those people. It makes a big yeah, difference. But, you know, if we, if we can just tackle one day and say. We can't get 15 people to show up for a club meeting. Or this. I know it's semantics, but. So Something to work. Sorry, right, to work. Uh, move, uh, moving along, um, we'll we'll try to wrap this up with as as quick as possible. Um, uh, why and Catherine, um, um, you uh, wanted to add. Um, oh, so you make me first? Yeah, I'm going to make it first. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, as going through the uh, going through all the stuff, the financials. Um, I realized we had not paid the rent. It was due September 1st, so I went over last week with a check and a big apology to to let the city know it was just an oversight and with Kathy's passing that it just got overlooked and no big deal. Well, Ms. Paula, uh, the mayor's uh, assistant, first question was, are you guys still meeting over there? I'm like, uh, yeah, yes. twice, twice a month. She's like, hang on a minute, disappears, comes back and says, keep your check. I was going to go ahead and pay the year. Just go ahead and get it out of the way so we didn't have to worry about it. They have graciously given us a year at no cost. Wow. Wow. So our rent is paid till next September. Good. We're paying wow. $10 a month. This is not a, you know, but but it's, um, <clears throat> this is coming from Steve North. And apparently, I don't know what conversations Amit had. I didn't ask. I said, thank you very much. Have a nice day. And I'm out of here. Um, but. I think there's some, I'm going to use the word guilt. I think they're feeling a little guilty about what had, what transpired with this building mm -hmm. and our use of it and or lack thereof. Um, so they wanted to do right. And they, he, the message I got from Paula was that Steve would be in touch uh -huh. and we can talk again later in the year. Okay. But they did not want us to feel like, you know, we, we did not owe anything that they were, she went ahead and put it in the ledger that don't need to see me, see my smiling face till next September. Last day. So um, she. I'm pretty sure she won't see you, but. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I can go bug her whenever I like. She's lovely. <laughs> I've been trying to convince her to come join the club, but um, so that was uh, quite the nice surprise, but um, probably not today, but we'll put it on a future uh, agenda to discuss what possibilities we have. I've I've got a couple of ideas of what we might could do downstairs. Okay. Because I'm just wondering if we can negotiate with Steve to use the basement. Uh -huh. Supposedly they were going to use it. The city was going to use it with their lawnmowers and well like I said there is some stuff stored down there. I don't see any lawnmowers, but like I said, they may be using it for their own purposes and that's fine. But just got me thinking, you know, it's a big empty space and there's obviously some work that's got to be done down there well, to make it usable. The side of this cubby hole out here. Yeah. Well, we went to a, a facility in Dorville, went to we'll see a play, and it, it, it's sort of eerie because it reminded me of this building where you had the top floor like this, what they had it used for city, and then what they've done, they took the downstairs, which again had the cinder block walls and so forth, and turned it into a small theater. I'm I think thinking, the first if. Yeah, we were talking. It's like you know, we could almost do that for our club, you know, and, and not turn it into a theater, not but turn it into theater. Well, but use that. That, that sounded like a great thing. <laughs> <It's laughs> it's our meeting space, and we, you know, we don't have. I love synergy. Time. I know, right? Well, that space downstairs, you know, is such that, you know, like I said, I, I just feel like there might be some. So there is a bathroom down there. Okay. It currently says out of order. But like I said, I I want to table that conversation for later, but I did want to let everybody know that 
the city very graciously declined our rent payment for a year. Wow. And uh, so, and all Paula asked was to put the money to good use. And I said, no worries there. Well, thank you, Lord, for that. Yes. So, I mean, absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, Lane Cowan. I just tried to be apologetic. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> based based on that request, I make a motion that we donate that, that whatever the yearly rent was to the streetwise. For Tracy coming. I second the motion. All right. Any discussion? What what was the Motion. A motion that we take that we don't. They ask that we do something good with the money. I motion that we oh, donate hundred down to street one. Hundred, yeah, hundred twenty dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. so we oh, give yeah. to street one. All right. Um, any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none. That motion carries, and streetwise is a beneficiary of our uh, freedom. Uh, 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 freedom. I'll take care of it. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, moving along, uh, uh, pecans. Um, we um, pecans. No, they're pecans. Whatever, whatever. The nuts. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Southwest Drive nuts that are peanuts. I don't know where you got that, but up here it says Ellis Brothers pecans. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. Okay. So uh, along, along these lines, along the same lines, um, the the first thing that Pete and I did tonight was we went over and saw Kathy. Um, we uh, um, time out. What does this yes. have to do with pecans? Uh, well, she's the um, executor of the. Person. She was the executor, and um, and essentially, um, Pete's cleaning out his garage. Um, she she and then um. She's in a, she's okay. in a, you know. So we need to find an alternate. No, no, we have, no, 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 no. Uh, Pete has, Pete has graciously offered his garage. But the, his garage is, is not a, to tell the universe, hey, today come and pick up your pecans or stop by during the week and pick up your pecans. That's not fair to Pete and Judy. Look, you know, in fairness, Kathy didn't say we could do that either. She, no, originally she said we were they were going to be able to distribute through the flower shop that people could their order they could come by and pick up their orders was my understanding. Right. Well, I was I was under pressure like one a couple of days, not. But even still, she couldn't the, remember. There were she days. couldn't remember at this when we went over there. She couldn't remember exactly what she said or not. She's she's in a daze. Got she, it. Yeah, she with her daughter passing. I mean, she's been Got really out right really now. out of it. So. Um, and, and I just said, OK, it's not that big a deal. I just got to move stuff to the other side of my garage okay. and I can get two skids of pecans in there. But here's the deal. When I know they're coming, mostly I get rid of most of them that evening or the next day. So it's not that big a deal, but there's going to be some left. And the reason is we always order a few extra. Plus, some people can't come and get them immediately. So usually I'll probably have at least a, a skid or so mm -hmm. left and, you know, you can all I get come and get them as quick as you can and that'll work for me. And have, you Pete, gotten, have you gotten much feedback on your request to know how many? For what? Have you gotten feedback on your request to know how many? How many I'll, people? I'm, I'm, I'm putting my... I hear two people talking here. What? Have you gotten feedback on? I know I've, you've gotten emails from me about how many pecans. Yeah. Have you gotten the others? I got an order from Christy today. Okay. Um, I can tell you right now, I have not gotten your order. I did get an order from Maria. I haven't gotten an order of pecans from you or Brian. I'm, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna there's get, still I'm some of you back. out here that want to order, and I know you've taken orders, but I have no idea. It was you because all I see is the square thing coming in, you know, it's it's the website. It's not me particularly. OK, well, I don't know where they're coming from. I understand all I'm that. Saying. And so I don't know how many are getting how many. So how does this work? Uh, you individuals are actually ordering online. 
and pink with the shipping. And that's as long as they're ordering online. Okay. I'm, we're capturing that through the the online web the there's online there's store. Some orders on there. Okay. I know I saw one with mm -hmm. with your name yeah. listed because we do ask them if a lion you know if you, yeah. if you if a lion helped you or a lion told you about us please tell oh, us which okay. lion. But <clears throat> he's looking right now specifically for if you're going to buy if you're going to take a box and and sell them oh, okay. yourself. Trying okay. to try to get an estimate. So yeah, we need to up the order. We can do okay. How many? I know you tell me four bags. Four bags. Yes. How many extra you have it? I have to call you. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. And I'm going to tell tomorrow okay. to Pete. Okay. Okay. Uh, apologize. I take envelope from you. Is in my purse. <laughs> and check is in home. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we, it's don't, we don't expect everybody to go out and sell 150 bags when they first come <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> in. Here's what. Go out and take orders for what you can. Okay. Those same people will be calling you next October. So, oh yeah, get in. I, I just went through my phone. Put together an Excel web sheet, mm -hmm. right? Spreadsheet with their names on it, okay. phone number, all that stuff. If they don't call you, you can call them back. But keep a record of everybody that you sell. Okay. Phone number and email, and then next year, if they're not contacting you, you contact us. I went through my phone. And this is my list right here. Yeah. Sent them a text. They started sending me. Oh yeah. Things. So you know, I'm just. But they're ordering directly. As long the as they're ordering off the site, then we're we're capturing those orders. Yeah. Okay. That's good. This is really the first year we've really gotten into that, and that's not oh. part of what I do. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> So I think we did some last year, but this is it. It works through it's a gradually. Sure. So mine are all by phone yes. and email. What I take yeah. in. Oh yes. Okay. So, Catherine. So, do you want every individual email that comes through with those orders? I can forward you the email confirmations as what, they come through. What, what I need to, to know is, to Brian. is Brian. Yeah. 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 How many bags are in the box? Oh, Sorry, hold on. Say yeah. that again, Brian. Send them to me, and I will, I will make sure Pete gets them. Okay. If I don't know how many pecans have been ordered, somebody's going to get shorted. I understand that. That's Pete. what we're talking about. That's what I'm we're talking about. I'm not concerned right with now. who <laughs> it is. I'm concerned with how oh, many it right. is. We'll make. We'll. We'll. We'll make. I'm as just surprised as you are when they order. <laughs> this isn't some miraculous sum that I, yeah. oh, I feel two yeah. cases coming on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, somebody has to keep up with that, and that's not my job. Right. I can, I can make sure I can, we, we, we will. Okay. You we will don't, make it work. You take care of it. I don't care how you do it. All right. I will, I will make sure you get the stuff. Pete, I have one question. How many pounds have one box? 24. 25. 24, 24 bags, 24 sure. pounds. Okay. Pound, pound each bag. Yes. One pound bags. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Halves or pieces. Yeah. They but come, most they of come them in want... small pieces mm -hmm. and they come, or they're medium pieces and they come in halves. Yep. Some people call them holes. Mm -hmm. No, no. There's two half to every two halves to every pecan. Right? They're yes. gonna crack <laughs> open the pecan. They're mammoth halves. There's two halves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. They're mammoth halves. Mammoth halves. Yeah. <clears throat> Big pretty ones. That's the description on the website. Yeah. yeah. All right. Right. So, wonderful. Um, yes, they are. They're wonderful. Marvelous. Yeah. Catherine, if if you look down at the bottom, we owe them uh, thirty five hundred dollars. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you already gave me that. Yeah. Oh, good. Right. So balance. In talking to Kathy tonight, she's going to find out if her friend that purchased five cases last year is to going to do that this year because right now I have ordered 35 cases for us. That is going to work unless she orders five more cases and then I have to add to it. All right. So this is where 
once I order, if I sort of start ordering a case or two at a time, it cost us. We we just blew our whole wide on heck was going to cost us. I tell you, if you if you've gone down and tried to send something on UPS or <laughs> mail, it is a chunk of money. Oh yeah. What is the last day we can place the order with Ellis Brothers before they get before they put it together? I am hoping Friday of this week. This Friday. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now I, think, I will I tell think you I have everything covered with this order with our 35 cases plus all the others we're going to get over about 66 cases totally with the other clubs. But if she hits me with five cases, I'm not going to have them. Well, that's what I'm saying. What we need to make it. We just need to draw a line in the sand because I can turn off the ordering. If we need to the online orders. If that once we know. Or we can, the other option I have is to put how the quantity we have left. We have 20 bags available of halves and 10 of, you know, whatever we have. And when those sell, those sell. Right. So, so but, is Kathy going to let you know tomorrow? Okay. Okay. So you're going to follow up with them. Yeah. The, the, the other thing I will say is the first weekend in November, that's actually, that's after, uh, that's after delivery. Um, I'm actually headed down to the camp. Um. Uh, and we're going to be passing right by that place. So there's a there's a potential that I may be able to pick some pick some up without without there being any freight. If that comes into play, I'm headed down with with Ed Ressler in his RV. I'm and headed back. I believe that I am ordering some extra. Because there's always people that come back and say, oh, I need two more bags. No, I get that. I need four more bags. And that's what I try to do every year. But, <clears throat> you know, if somebody comes back like Kathy's person and I need five cases, I ain't got five cases. So I'm hoping to get that done. Okay. Yeah. All right. We need to know by Friday. Yes. Thursday night. Thursday night. Okay. I mean, if you hit me, if you call me Friday morning, so, but I I can make the call to Ellis Brothers and they can put them on the truck. That sounds good. All right. Uh, one the one more item is um, uh, just a follow up on on uh, Bobby's Ferry Ferry Pete. They've had to change some things around at Bubba's. The only only group that they had that replied to them for this Halloween thing. Lawrenceville, right? I have five bags of candy. It's probably going to be about 450 pieces of candy that I got from Costco that I'm going to make available, right? It is from five to eight when the candy's gone. I'm not going to buy any more. No. They don't need no more candy than that. They're going to arrange sky high anyway all that sugar but um they're giving us an opportunity to do this uh, she also said that she was sorry she missed us thursday night she had the flu um so she had to skip it she also said she'd like to uh, set up another date with us to come back and do this thing again all right and i think if we can do that um we can have a little bit more time to get people out and come in there and eat, okay? Um, the other thing she wants to do is set up a gift card fundraiser for us where our organization can sell Bubba's gift cards to friends and family and they'll donate 10% of those proceeds back to us. I would recommend that if we're gonna do that, if that's what we choose to do, we do that starting in January because we don't have a lot of stuff going on fundraisers January, February, March. There's a reason. Your huh? treasurer's in tax season. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, he, he can put money in the bank. Whatever. So, I mean, you know, give him funding. But, I mean, this is this is all up to you. And this is what my communication with her is okay so if y'all want to vote on that or learn more about it or whatever uh that's fine with me 
So if anybody would care to come over to Bubba's on the 31st Bubba. of October, which is next Monday night, and uh, help hand out candy with the kiddies that show up, I would appreciate it. If you I'll don't, be there. Well, Christy's still, huh? Christy's still doing her Jeep, right? No, no, no. no. And she, they canceled that. They, they canceled, canceled that. They canceled the trunk or treat because we were the only truck. Oh, so we're going to do this on the patio. That's yes, so it's, it's the same night. Up, we'll be on the it's the same night, night, but we'll be the only one there doing that. So, we'll oh, great! We'll have two old men there. <laughs> yeah, little girl, have some candy. <laughs> Well, shave your beard. You won't look so old. You don't. You don't want me to shave my beard. <laughs> he won't look like Santa Claus. <clears throat> but I'll be there. All right. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I, I would like to give Gloria something here because I think, even though I have put this out and sent it out to our members in the past, and I don't know how many members here have actually read this, but it needs to be updated. There's things that we do not do any longer, but I still printed it out. That's our policy and procedures. It just tells us a lot about our club and, you know, when we, when we start in the year, how we elect officers, how we do this and how we do that. Um, and again, I will say that that is not written in stone. If you all want to go in there and go over it and change some things, I think we should look at it because, like I said, there's things in there that are basically out of date. That was two years ago when I put this together, and I don't think we have actually ever implemented what was put there. Thank you. Again, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I'm done. Tom, did you get the picture that I sent you? Did you get a picture that I sent you? Of, of what? Tonight? Of our speaker? No, not yet. I guess you should have gotten it by now. Um, I'm going to try to send it again. After you get on the door. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Give me a favor, make sure it's on the highest setting. Well, that's what I thought. But we don't wait. I says what? I have uh, a few. I got a I, I got your text, Tom. Don't yes, have to be folded. Um, so I can't. I, um, bring them to the next meeting. About. Don't wait. Don't like, the you know what I'm yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. I'm going to go to the next meeting. Thank you. 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 I immediately got in touch with the lighthouse and asked them who, who, who won the contract for that for their services. Um, for which the hearing aids? Yes. And and oh, uh, Fran got in touch with me right away, and I made sure that to to contact uh, uh, who who contacted us and point and pointed her in the right direction. She was very very appreciative. That reminds me, Tom. Did you see the voicemail from? Uh, the optometry office, I can't remember now where it was. Did not. Okay. All right. I'll call them tomorrow. It's two weeks old. I'm sure they'll appreciate that. <laughs> I'm Catherine. So Hi. nice to meet no, you. Yeah. No, you I'm the pain in the butt of the night. <laughs> Just so <laughs> many I sent that. I am. I am. Okay. Just so. Okay. So. Let's see if we can this time. Oh, by the way, I see that Tom has his jar out here for spare change. Fortunately, I don't have So if you have any spare change, please donate to hunger. Yes. We just gave $150 to hunger. Sorry, did you get it? Oh did you get it? Oh gosh, I got a shingle. And you're so painful, like you're fine. You cannot oh my gosh, you're fine. You're fine. I just meant to take dogs. Oh, you're fine.
So um, I keep trying to find a way to work the schedule so that I can be free during the day to go help box stuff because, you know, this time I'm like, the like four layers of clothes waiting for people to drive. Yes, and it's the evening. No, it's for the rain. It's huh? a great system. Monday evening, Halloween, it's going to be rain. It's going to be rain and going to be kind of cold. Okay. 